stiff arms of crap out of <laughs> Draco's match right there. Going down again. That's Q. Red Williams. Fighting through contact, fighting through offensive line, I mean, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one. Just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're supposed to football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition, the 11th edition of Blue It Splits. Um, <clears throat> and we are here with our last uh, prospect review until the Jets draft in now five days, uh, five days away. It's super exciting to see what's going to happen. Uh, you got some rumors flying around that Jamal Adams will get traded. Don't really want to get too much into that. We'll get into that a little bit more on Monday. Um, I hope it doesn't happen. I, I know that, you know, just to be short, uh, that's, you know, not a good team, can't afford to pay a, a safety. He has a lot more than just any other safety. He's the life and blood of the team. Uh, Jets don't have elite talent, so let's pay the elite talent we do have <laughs> because they don't have a ton of it. At this point, if they traded him, the only other elite type player they have is CJ Mosley, and that's it. Uh, if you want to argue Le'Veon Bell, sure, but he's pretty dependent on the offensive line regardless. And two, um, he's probably going to be gone after this season. So then you're going forward with CJ Mosley and hopefully Sam Darnold as your as your core. Uh, I would I'd like to have Jamal Adams, who's a, what, a 24, 25 years old, um, in that core. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. He's skipping voluntary workouts apparently. Um, but I'm not going to look into it too, too much. He still has two years left on his deal. So we'll see what Joe Douglas, um, is going to do. And I think a lot of it's that the Jets are, are hearing offers, which every GM should do. If, if, if you're not, if you're not even accepting calls for a guy who might get, who, who you know, teams are going to offer for, if they're going to cu- call up and, you know, hypothetically, okay, they're going to offer two, three first round draft picks, which like I said, hypothetically, you'd be a fool not to take it or not to at least listen. So, yeah, they're going to listen to calls, but it, the real question is, are teams going to be willing to pay what the Jets um, want to trade Jamal Adams, who is the franchise player right now? It's him and Sam. Um, but, but Sam, just because of the position he plays, Jamal is the lifeblood of the defense. Um, he does everything. He, he could he could blitz through any gap. He could set the edge. Uh, he could fill. He could play coverage uh, on tight ends, on running backs. He could play in the slot. He could play any zone you want him to. You know, the only thing he doesn't, he can't do amazingly, is play. You know, maybe man coverage on 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 uh, receivers. But other than that, and, and I'm sure if you put him on man coverage on a receiver, he'd still do pretty damn well. So he is not just a safety. Um, he is an all around great player. So we'll, we'll see. I really hope it doesn't happen. Um, the Jets don't have generational type talents like that, uh, often. I, I think since I've been watching, I'm going to say the only, and people can argue with this, this, this with me all day in terms of what generational talent is. Um, I think the only three players I've seen who are generational talents is, is Jamal Adams, Darrell Revis, and probably Curtis Martin. And that's it. I know Nick Mangle was great and, and Ferguson was great, but how long were they the top of their position for how many years? Like people, a lot of people say, Oh, David Harris is so great. And David Harris was great, but he also never, and I'm not just based on pro bowls, but he's never made a pro bowl, you know? So Jets fans tend to overrate their own guys. DeBergershaw Ferguson was a good left tackle. He was never elite left tackle. Nick Mangold was one of the league's top centers, but was he the top center for years and years and years? I don't think so. So um, the only generational talents I, I would say in the last 20 years has been Curtis Martin, Jamal Adams, Darrell Revis. And if you're and if you're willing to just trade another one away, like we trade away Revis, which is a little bit different now, um, I, I don't I don't get it. The Jets don't have a ton of a ton of uh, guys to pay right now, and you know they're they're down on cap space. But they're paying Brian Winter seven million dollars. They're still playing. They're still paying like Tremaine Johnson like six, seven, eight million dollars. They don't have generational talents that they're having to pay and having to. Um, decide which one. You know, it's not. It's not like you have a ton of talent on this team. Um, so I, I think it'd be kind of crazy to to uh, to do that. And you have to figure out that Le'Veon Bell is not going to be here next year. So like, let's just say Le'Veon Bell and Tremaine Johnson. It's like an extra twenty million dollars. That that's Jamal Adams' uh, salary right there. You know, less than twenty million dollars. But we'll get into that a different day on Monday. Um, today, like I said, is most likely going to be a podcast for other people. I don't think that a lot of Jets are going to be super interested in uh, Chase on the edge rusher from LSU, but I'm going to do it. Uh, I did I did this review, probably prepped for it, was April, probably two months ago. Um, so he's been in my, he's been 
waiting for a review for a while. But I'll do him just in case, you know, never know. Maybe the Jets trade down. Maybe there's no receiver there that they like or offensive lineman. They get him. I doubt it before people start commenting on YouTube. Oh, this will never happen. It, I, I get it. I don't want it to happen either. Um, but I think it's 23 plays to chase on, which today is Saturday. Then we have Monday. We have the mailbag with Kyle Smith. We're not taking any more questions for that. Uh, we'll do an offseason recap. We'll discuss the things like uh, – Jamal Adams, that will be a little bit more of like a, like a storyline-based show, um, which, will, which should be fun. And then Monday night as well, like I said, if you're bored Monday night, you have nothing to do. Uh, you can go to 8 o'clock at uh, the YouTube channel Jets 24-7. Um, type in that, and then you could, you could watch the live stream on YouTube and type in questions to me and the, uh, the, the host. I believe his name is Ryan. He, uh, he, he's having me on as a guest so we're going to discuss the Jets offseason we're going to just discuss the Jets first round options second round options maybe third round out uh, th- third round options but just put up chase on on the uh, on my twitter um at joerb31 you can follow me there uh youtube blue it's blitz subscribe like it the podcast blue it's blitz same thing uh drop the five stars and uh write a short review if you could like i said obviously this this podcast takes more time than any other podcast uh, out there for jet stuff. Let's be completely honest. Um, a lot of other people just will maybe prep for an hour or two and then show up. This, this takes <laughs> a lot more than an hour or two to just get one of these shows together in terms of the, the beginning time from watching the film, putting it together, putting it out, then doing the show. It just, it takes a lot of time. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, you can tweet or email me. Um, email is at Joe period blew it, B L E W E T T at jets, X um, And that is, it for now so let's get into his strengths and weaknesses uh lsu 63 254 didn't he didn't perform at the at the uh the, the combine but games i watched auburn alabama texas oklahoma florida um strengths quick first step actually b- before i do that let me let me get into my board because I didn't, I didn't release this yet and i was going to and you guys kind of already know it if you actually been paying attention or if you care at all um, my board since he's done um, and this is my board for myself this is not for the Jets I'll, I'll say my Jets board in a second my board um, is Wills one Judy and this again the, the eight guys I've did I, I don't have Burrow in here Chase Young in here Okuda in here Isaiah Simmons in here etc um, Wills one Judy two Worfs three Lamb four Thomas five, Beckton six, Rug seven, Chase on eight. Who I'm about to do for the Jets? That would probably look like um, I would say I would say Wills one, Worfs two, uh, Beckton three. Beck, I would I, I'd probably say Thomas. Honestly, I, I feel a little bit safer with Thomas at this point. So I'd say Wills one, uh, Worfs two, Thomas three, Beckton four, Judy five, Rugs. I mean, uh, Lamb six, Rug seven, Chase on eight. At this point, like that's the Jets, the what, what should be the Jets board, um, in my opinion. So that is my board. Um, but getting back into his strengths and weaknesses, uh, strengths, quick first step, especially with hand in the dirt, three or four point stances, lateral quickness, agility, flexibility, uh, shows swipes, inside spins, chops, rips, long arms, and clubs, less than shoulder as he bends, uh, gets really low and bend dip. Shows speed to power. Uh, he's a good player on stunts. Can drop into coverage either in man or zone, which is a positive for sure. Uh, change of direction skill. Hands are active in the run game. Test tackles inside and out. Good build leader on and off the field, which you hear from LSU, which is a good thing, obviously. Um, strength through bend. Hand placement on runs. Plays a good leverage. Motor will thump. Um, the neck. The the weaknesses. Um, Tore ACL in 2018 and missed two games in 2019 with ankle injury, so slight injury concerns. Uh, not really with the with the ankle in 2000 in 2019, but the ACL is it's always something that's going to be a little bit concerning. Uh, struggles versus power, loses balance too often. Accuracy, timing of hands, lets offensive tackles get into his chest. Needs to take more initiative with hands, feet, and setting up offensive tackle, which I'll show. Um, some recoil at snap could do better job of softening his edge. Uh, rushes with no plan too often runs run to pass can have a slight delay uh, snap timing is inconsistent could clean up tackling for him would like to see more active feet and run game needs a clean clean up technique on speed to power with both steps and hips okay so to get into his film let me just pull it up real quick uh here i'll pause it before i bring it up all right, first play of 24. I'll run through them relatively fastly just because, like I said, if Jets fans are watching, I'm sure they're not. 
Um, super interested in drafting Chase on at 11. Like I said, if they trade down, you, you never know. Um, he is the edge right here. Stand up. And like I said, one of my issues with his game is that he too often gets caught in the chest. He really doesn't have a great pass rush plan. Um, here he rushes at the arc, but there's not really any plan to defeat the tackle right here. Um, whether whether that be rushing inside, bending it outside while chopping down the arms, or rushing hard up the arc, defeating the arms, spinning inside, or or just crossing his face with a cross chop inside. There really wasn't wasn't much. There's no club, but there's no rip. He kind of just places his hand onto the chest, uh, gets caught in the chest, and then he's locked down from that point. He's ripped to the ground, uh, which is not a great play to start with. He definitely gets better than this, but um, it's one of the first plays I noticed, which was not a pretty start. So uh, needs to have more than a, more of a plan than just putting his hand onto the onto the guy's chest without trying to really defeat his arms. Now, if he was trying to if he was trying to to long arm long arm him to bull rush, this is a completely different story. Which if he was, it was a really poor setup regardless. So. Um, either way, that's not a good play um, for Chase on who gets laid on top of him and just completely taken out of that play by the uh, the left tackle. Let's see. Two. Inside spin. Okay, so he's the top. Yeah, so like I said, his, his flexibility, his mobility in his hips, how quickly he can spin, it's all positives. Um, he's on the top of the screen right here. And like I said, there is some recoil in, in, his, in his stance. There's always going to be a little bit, but I think his is pretty drastic at times where it really takes him an extra second to get off the ball. So I like to see him more ready at the snap. Um, but rushes up the arc. The offensive tackle starts to open up, which he's taking big steps, as you can see, and he hops off of his feet. Um, so the offensive tackle takes big steps. Chase on is going to show him his back. He's going to chop the outside arm with the right arm, and then he's going to step, kind of split his his base with the, with the, with the – uh, with that foot right there, his right foot, and spin inside. I would like to see that a little bit more tight, just a tiny bit more tight to, to the offensive lineman, but it's fine. He times it well where, where you defeat the outside arm of the offensive lineman with that, with that chop, and then you're defeating the inside arm with your back. You're, they're going to punch, and it's going to roll off your back, and then you just defeated the hand. So he defeats his hands with the body, defeats the hand, Left arm comes around, which slings shots him into the quarterback. He pushes off, and uh, the quarterback obviously gets rid of the ball really, really quickly. But I'm um, still an, an effective uh, inside spin move right there by by Chase on. And some people, oh well, he didn't get the hit. Listen, if I gotta explain this to you, that this is a this is a good play for him just because the quarterback got rid of the ball too quickly. Um, then I don't. I'm not gonna tell you to stop listening, but there, I shouldn't need to explain that to you. If if this was covered. Um, well, and then the quarterback had to had to hold the ball and slide in the pocket. He's probably screwed. So it's it's a good play by Chase on. He pressures the quarterback. Um, next play, athleticism. Okay, I think he's gonna be on the top in this one. Yeah, okay, so top edge, right here. Again, super athletic. Uh, the, the 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 short area explosion is definitely something you you you, you note in his play. And they're running this. Uh, GT counter, OT counter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I call it a uh, OT counter. Some people call it GT. And they're going to pull the one open pulls and one skip pulls. Uh, they're going to pull the guard and the tackle. The guard is going to kick out the edge. And then the tackle is going to fill for the running back. Uh, it gets a little bit screwed up here because Chase on, again, he stays in the backside, which is good. He shuffles down the line of scrimmage, staying square. Good job again. He sees the he sees the um, the punch step from the running back and then him head back to his side. He avoids the the puller, hard step up field and outside. Bend. Look how low he is. Look how low he is. <laughs> Again, this is flexibility. This is a lot of athleticism um, into this play. He is really really low to the ground right now to bend around that uh, those two pullers. Jumps forward and uh, gets in on the tackle. Um, of the legs of the of the quarterback is that a quarterback so is this a, is this a oh no sorry okay so this is this is a it's it's still a gt counter um some people call it a q counter but a q counter could also be a a of counter so let's call it a, a quarter a quarterback ot counter um like i said really good flexibility good burst up the field good angles dives 
and uh, assist on the tackle by grabbing the QB's ankles. All right. Four. Press mesh. Five days, people. It's really freaking exciting. Uh, I didn't even talk about this in the in the pre-show, uh, but all the guys, and a lot of people were messaging me like, "Hey, can you do this guy? Hey, can you do Levisky Shul? Hey, can you do Van Jefferson um, from LSU? Can you? Hey, can you do this guy? This is a target. Hey, can you?" I, I'm not right now. Um, if whoever the Jets draft, I will get film out. Like I said, I had film out last year on Greg Dortch and all these different guys. So anybody who gets drafted, I'll do my absolute best to find anything. Even even if they don't have any game cutups on YouTube, if they have highlights, I'll try to break down highlights which is hard to do, but I'll try to do it. Um, so I'll do the absolute best I can, whoever the Jets draft. Right now, currently, I'm actually <laughs> – I literally just finished with all these reviews, and now I'm doing I – have, I have five more games of this year to do. I did like 18 games of him. I have six more games of uh, – uh, I, I always screw up his name, Peanut, uh, Unisar, whatever his name is. Um, and I have like six more games of Van Roten. So I'm trying to finish up those guys in, in the next four or five days. So that's like 17 games I have to watch, 16 games I have to watch in the next five, six days so I can get ready because inevitably the Jets are going to draft. And then a week after that or two after that, they're, they're going to sign an extra guy or two, whatever position they felt like they missed out on. You know, let's say if they, they are targeting Arnett or whatever his name is, the, the corner from Ohio State in the third round. He doesn't slip to them, and now they don't like any of the corners the rest of the draft. Okay, well, now after the draft, they sign Darkwise Denard. Like, that stuff happens. Um, so I'm trying to prep before that happens because I'm going to have to get out both the draft content of who the Jets drafted, the guys after they – who they sign after the draft, and then I'm going to still, – I still have to put up after the draft. I still have to put up Fant. In, I'll probably do this in order. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it to a vote on, on the Twitter. But uh, so I'll do Fant, Desir, Van Roten, and uh, Peanut. So – like I said, ton of ton of stuff coming. So I'm actually not I'm not taking days off. I'm actually just prepping uh, for after the draft. So bottom of the screen, press mesh. Again, Auburn's running a lot of these uh, these inside zone um, reads and RPO reads. And Chase does a good job pressing the mesh point. This is how this is how a lot of guys want. This is how a lot of coaches want to attack zone reads because, again, when it first came out. You know, they teams weren't used to it, and they okay. You either take the running back or you take the quarterback and do it aggressively, um, and it, it led to obviously that becoming a really clear you know read for the quarterback for the running back. And now teams they want those those athletic guys who attack the, the the mesh point. Where at this point, like who do you hand off to? You know, he's he's so close to the mesh point, it's a hard decision to make. So it screws up with the timing of RPO and and read options and things like that. Um, some some teams will even just have this guy straight taking up the quarterback every time, and then another guy um, on the team de- uh, playing the running back no matter what. So it's there's different ways to respond to to zone reads, RPO type stuff. So he pressures the mesh point, he stays square. As soon as he sees the quarterback take the ball, uh, plants hard and explodes to him. I'll play this in full speed. You can just appreciate a little bit of the athleticism, but good job um, pressing the mesh point. Um, and able to change directions quickly to get on the quarterback who has to throw the ball out of bounds. Uh, so, again, he has really, really good athleticism, explosion, uh, short area quickness, change of direction, loose hips, flexibility, bend. Like, he has a lot of interesting tools he just has to develop uh, technically. If he develops technically, he's a guy who, in my opinion, is, 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 low, is low floor, high ceiling type player. He's boomer bust. Um, if he doesn't put it together, he'll just be, he'll just be another guy. Um, a jag but if he puts all this together he has he has he has the bend um he has the explosion he has the length he just needs to work on the technique and the strength part of those big five that i always say um i think he has a strength i think he if if he throws himself to, to, together technically more um that strength would show so i would argue he has four of the five he just needs to develop technically um bottom edge blows up run So you have the you have the the, the corner blitz. The corner is going to set this edge for him. So he's really just responsible for the B gap. It looks like he has B gap. He has A gap. This the the linebacker staying over top. I don't know what gap he's. I'd have to have a, a different view of this to, to see. We have a A B C. I'm not, I'm not sure about the linebackers. I'd like to have that a different view. Maybe he's the maybe he's a B gap. But regardless. Um, Chase on has looks like he seems like he has a flexibility to shoot into that B gap. One hard step up field with the left, which he plants off of at the same time. 
the offensive tackle opens up, um, which again, this is why when I say, okay, well, when you're trying to block guy to the backside or trying to hinge block him, whatever you want to call it again, um, you want to step upfield then to him. You don't want to just open up because then you leave a big gap. The big gap is exactly why. So he takes one hard step upfield. He flips his hips. Uh, Chase on crosses his face, dips his shoulder in to avoid to 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 lessen that surface area that the court that the uh, offensive tackle can can punch. He gets held undoubtedly. He fights through that, tackles the running back. I play in full speed. So again, that's quick. It's uh, he's definitely not an easy player to to block. Um, so he's an interesting prospect. I just really don't think the Jets take him, but. Like I said, I'm not gonna just gonna throw, you know, drag the file into my into my trash bin and delete everything that I have on him. So, uh, hopefully, whatever fan base, Falcons, whoever, maybe I can send it to him on uh, Twitter, and we'll see if they watch it. So, top. Okay, so he's on the top, rushes up the arc. Isn't I I I hope I'm not wrong. Uh, I I can look it up and pause it, but it's wrong. Isn't that uh, I think the left tackle of Auburn's uh, Tay Te- 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 Wagamo or whatever his name is. Like the, he's like a second, third round draft prospect, left tackle. I believe that's him. I think he could be a target for the Jets in the second, third round, um, and they could develop him. Whether it be you know they draft a, a Wills and then the third round he's available and they make him compete with Shell and and Fant, like you know whatever it is. But ideally, yeah, I want the Jets to take two. I, honestly. Uh, in this draft, like they have eight draft picks, I think offensive tackle, offensive guard, because I want inside and outside. Because like they have some, they, they, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I would be happy with with tackle, tackle or tackle guard, because tackle, tackle, you can have the other tackle fight with those guys for a job. But if if it's a guard, you can have him compete with with Winters, Van Roten, and Lewis, who all have slight injury concerns. So I would probably t- say tackle guard. Which is one and two, or one and two, just saying overall in picks. Really need a corner. I would say you know third, fourth, fifth round definitely should grab a corner. I think a backup running back in the late rounds is smart. So that's four, um, two receivers. I think at least in this draft, if they drafted three, I wouldn't be mad. But at least two receivers, edge rusher, whether that be a, a will, a, what is the name like Wilkinson or whatever, um, in the in the uh, fifth or sixth or fourth from Michigan State, and then other than that, you know maybe. I, th- I, might, I might be blanking on a position, but I, I think at least like seven of the eight picks hopefully are, are those positions. It's most likely not going to be. They'll end up drafting um, like a safety or something, which honestly I don't think it's the worst idea like as a backup safety in the sixth, seventh round if you want to develop a guy, but um, we're going to keep any of this. So up the arc, the offensive tackle goes to goes to open up and he shoots that left hand. You could see that Chase on slaps down the, le- the, le- uh, the, the left hand with his um, outside hand continues to press, uh, press up the arc. The offensive tackle, because he slapped that hand, is now trying to recover and lean into um, Chase on. He clubs him, arm over. Now, I don't call this a hump because the hump is more or is more set up by it typically, and it could be either way where you could set it up by club rip. And when that guy leans into your rip, you, you take that arm out and then throw him over. That's a true hump move. Now, if this situation were this and he was to get his hand underneath the underneath of the armpit and kind of and kind of almost like club him underneath his armpit to his ribs and throw him by I would call it a club but because it's over top um, I'm gonna call it a, a a club arm over right there rushes to the quarterback again the quarterback has to dirt the ball but he he gets there so good rush from from Chase on there play seven no plan okay and this is what I see a decent amount of this in his game which is why uh, he's not gonna get drafted as high as a Josh Allen or any of those guys like they did last year Again, that burst, let's start again, top of the screen, which is watch the burst. That's all we're watching right now. It's pretty damn good. That, that, is, that is pretty good. So, again, I would like to see him do more here. You see how we just, he just, he just kind of bending into it, just going to try to bend the edge. You have to defeat the hands. You have to do something, whether that be, you know, like a, uh, you know, a couple hard steps outside, step inside, make him flip his hips back uh, to the inside, and then you chop his outside arm and, and uh, go outside and then bend. You have to do something here. You can't, you can't just rush up the arc and just duck your head into him and try to bend. So he doesn't really try to defeat the arms, it doesn't seem. The uh, tackle's a little bit off balance just because of his speed, but he's able to get his hands on him and uh, push him up the arc and out of the play. And obviously this is a – this isn't even really a drop. This is just – he just gets the ball and throws it. There's not really a true drop there. Um, 
but again, I'd like to see a, a better plan here from, from Chase on. So next play, speed around edge. All right. It's against Bama. All right, yeah. So, again, quarterback gets rid of the ball, watch on top of the screen. Again, good explosion up the arc. He misses. So, he's he's going to chop on that left – on the left arm. I'm right, sorry, yeah, of the left arm of the left tackle. Here, just because based on your angle, I would like to see – eh, it doesn't really matter. I guess you could chop it that outside arm. I think, I think an inside chop would be a little bit more effective because you can chop it and throw it into a rip. And when you're chopping from across your body, you reach and you have a tendency to to hit to kind of aim for more surface area. Where if you're, where if you're having to come over top, you're gonna really have to make sure you you bend you bend that arm to to attack it. Um, instead of where you come across, it's you're, you're usually reaching. So you're gonna be at a straighter angle, which is gonna lead to you you usually hitting more surface area. But um, misses that chop, but still is able to bend. And he get, he gets it on the hit of the quarterback. So I'll show it in full speed again. Good burst, uh, good bend right there. Good power through his bend. I like to seem to defeat the arms a little a little bit more uh, cleanly there though, because he would he'd had a softer edge. Uh, is what they say, hard edge, soft edge. Um, chase on athleticism. Okay, so you see him on the bottom of the screen. They're running like a mid zone, outside zone, um, fake split with a with a uh, half of an orbit motion that comes back outside to the flat. They hit number six right here. Chase on maintains outside leverage, which is good. He doesn't. You don't want to see him get at, get in too far inside, and he has uh, you know to rush all the way up the sideline. So sees the blocker coming. Burst up field and around it gets a gets a definite block in the back right there. That is hundred percent a block in the back. So the ref is standing right there, doesn't call it, and he's still able to take out the uh, the wide receiver's um, ankles. So again, I'll play in full speed. You're gonna, now you're gonna see it in fast motion. Burst, bend, athleticism, all of it is there on that play. Play ten flexibility. Uh, is this the top edge? Yeah, uh, I believe this is the run play where he shows a really, like really legit bend on this play. Yeah, okay. So top of the screen again. Fake jet sweep. Looks like inside zone. And now with him being so aggressive, the only thing he has to watch in the NFL about this is if you're going to shoot up field, they might let you shoot up, shoot up field and you're out of the play. Open up that B gap and now they have a huge, huge area to the B gap. But if you're like in a... In a aggressive penetrating type defense and they want you to shoot that edge and shoot hard up the edge. That's fine. Um, so he shoots hard up the edge, throws in a rip and look at it. Look at the, the bend right here. That is ridiculous. And again, I talk about it like ankle flexibility. The fact that his leg is at this angle and he's still able to, to create movement off of that foot through the, through the dirt ankle flexibility. Um, it was funny when I, when I got engaged, I put up the picture of me proposing a lot of people talk about my ankle flexibility. Cause I, I bring it up a lot, but, um, I think it's important right there. That bend is as legit as it gets. You, you don't really get much lower than that. Um, he is down almost at his crotch level and bending on again. I suck at angles. I gotta start learning angles cause I talk about angles a lot, but this angle is ridiculous. Upper body, his, his upper body is, is obviously upright power through the bend. The angle his lower body is working at right now is absurd. Um, this is probably the most. This is probably the most impressive play that he's had just in terms of bend. I should screenshot that and then just put that out there um, because if he can build upon that, damn! So power through that bend, bend, and he's able to turn this corner ridiculously tightly. <laughs> oh man, tackles him. That is impressive. That's that's watch it again at full speed. That is really freaking impressive. Oh man. Yeah, that's that's nice. Okay, so that stuff really. I see. That. I saw that. I was like, damn, that's. I haven't watched that play uh, in a little bit. So, chase on spill uh, spin on on uh, Will's, and this is a, again one of Will's issues. And he's still my number my number one player, my number one tackle for the Jets. But he he will overset at times or open up a little bit too soon. A lot of tackles do. So here, he opens up too soon, 
and it, there's looks like there's some upper body uh, and lower body disconnection right here. Oh, well, maybe not. He's just reaching for the block, but you like to see him be a little more patient with his feet. He kind of drops steps and, and turns. He turns his hips out. You'd like to see almost like they call like a zero step. Um, we're just going to drop your foot pretty much in, in place right here because chase on so tight. Um, and it's an inside handoff or it's an RPO it actually looks like. So actually is it an RPO? Let's see. I would call it one. Um, so we're not talking about Wills though. Wills does not play this very well, but chase on rushes up field. Again, spins, defeats the – looks like he tries to chop the outside arm. I'm not sure if he, he gets it on, but regardless, it's a good technique right there. Spins really tightly, gets around in his hips around 360 degrees in one step. Now, with the only thing I could say with his spin move is I would, again, like to see this, this foot a little bit more splitting him. You want, you want that to be tight. So you can spin around that hip. You almost want to, you literally want to spin around that hip, like almost put your ass on his outside leg and spin around it. When you have this much room in the NFL, guys can recover a little bit easier. So just to, again, slight criticism would be to, um, to, to get that foot in a little bit more splitting the hips. So it's a little bit tighter, um, but he's able to defeat it. Quarterback gets rid of the ball again, but he, he pressures it. They don't make the catch here. No, this is the play. Did I, I think I talked about this for rugs. Yeah, Ruggs needs to feed the arm there too. So we're watching like three different prospects right now. <laughs> Actually, four. Where is where is so we're watching Judy? Judy is is Judy here? No, he's on the bottom. Looks like I don't know. There's a lot of prospects in this video. So next play, no plan. All right, top of the screen. Okay, so this is what you're, you're gonna use. I see this too much, and, and you can't be doing this in an NFL level because you're not going to beat anybody. Um, rushes up the arc again, tries to stick his arm in there, but he kind of just he doesn't, he doesn't, if he is trying to long arm, you would like to see him get more power behind that arm. You see how his if he is long arming, his hips aren't flipped into it, and his it looks like his toe is not pointed into it. I'll show a better example of that later. Um, if he is trying to long arm, it's not a really successful long arm. The guy is able to anchor down pretty easily and get his hands on him. So defeat the arms, do something more right here, but but not that. And he's you can see he's not he's not able to get off this block at all. The quarterback is standing pretty pretty right here. He gets thrown to the ground. So um, if you are going to long arm, set it up better, and we'll talk about that in a little bit when I have a better angle. Oh, click that report but record button a little bit too early. Hold on. Okay, let's see. Ugh. Um, we are going to play thirteen. All right. Speed to power. Bottom of the screen. Okay, so. He's he's using the long arm right now. It's a you know form of bull rushing. The my problem my problem with his bull rush right here is so I like how he rushes up the arc. The guy starts to open up, and you can see his 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 body is taking him this way. So it's going to be easier for him to work through him. The only issue I have with this is one leaning into it when you don't have any contact with the ground. You're not generating a lot of power. You'll see a lot of guys drive in and what you really want to do is initiate contact through that right foot so one two maybe th maybe even a third or a fourth but change up your your steps a little bit if you know you want to uh if you want a long arm right here that's again have a plan you'll see a lot of guys plant off of this right and then once they plant off the right that's when they'll start they'll start leaning in because you create pressure off of the off of the instep of that right foot and you drive through him if it's a long arm, if it's if you're going to truly bull rush him, you want to completely flip your hips so you're working through his body, not like halfway through his body. So um, he initiates contact when he's up in the air right now. Um, he, now he gets low and his hand looks a little bit high. It looks like it's on the shoulder pad. So I like the leverage right here that he gets low. I would just like to see him set it up a little bit differently where maybe he put his right foot forward 
uh, and stepped one, two, three, four off of the right, right? So it'd be right, one, two, three, whatever, whatever it be. Get off the right foot. It's changed up his cadence a little bit and then lean into it. I don't necessarily want to see him lean into it when he is again in the air and creating that drive off of the left foot because you're creating the drive off the left foot. You're not creating as much power. Um, now he is able to get into him, get under him again. Does this work in the NFL? Maybe, maybe not. He's able to get underneath the um, armpit area, outer pec, the yeah, outer pec. The momentum again is taking the, uh, the tackle up the arc and past the quarterback's level. He is able to um, throw him again past that level and get the quarterback uh, and hit the quarterback. So just little criticisms would like to see plant off the right and explode into him off of that right instead of lean into him when you don't have contact and you're going off of the left foot primarily. So um, just slight from that's from what I've learned. So uh, 14. Bend, club, rip. All right. Bottom of the screen, bottom edge. Again, pretty close. Um, this is like that Aaron Donald type move. A lot of guys are using this. Pretty good snap timing. Good speed up up the arc. And a lot of guys will rush up the arc, change their direction a little bit into you. And then when they get your hips to stay inside, they're going to jump to the outside club and then rip and plant, which he does. Um, maybe he could get his hips to stay a little bit farther inside here. He kind of rushes straight up the arc. He doesn't really change his angles too much. So maybe if he were to go up the arc, change his angle inside, get, his, get, get this guy's hips to stall or stay a little bit more inside, uh, this would be a, he would soften the edge right here. But he is able to, to land that club jump into cornering the edge and the the again because he doesn't hold his hips inside he's kind of see the, the guy's kind of square right now the, the tackle even though he's leaning hard into it so he would soften his edge right here and again good bend but the guy gets his hands onto his onto his rib cage and he and he loses balance he almost gets it again like good flexibility good bend right here but it's hard when you're that low and a guy's pushing on your back so he ends up falling or and he almost stays up and he almost gets the quarterback, but he's just a hair short. So good, but he could have improved that rep a little bit, but still impressive from the intangible type standpoint. Um, he has some tools and he has some moves. He's had to clean the moves a little bit. Bottom edge. Again, really good burst. You see that with, with just even, even him just flashing. So this is where he's, again, really good burst off of the line right there. So my thing with this is if you're going to bull rush, again, you see how his hips are pointing outside? So his body wants to go this way and his upper body is trying to go this way. So you see the disconnection right there. So you're not, you're not creating a lot of power right here because all of your power right here is coming through your upper body. You're not creating anything from your lower body right here. So if you are going to bull rush, rush up that arc on this step, completely transition your hips inside. So now flip your hips. Flip your hips, and then you're gonna and then you're gonna get under his pads and just drive him right to the quarterback. But you're not gonna be able to bull rush guys if you're leaning into him and your hips are going one way and your upper body's going the other way. So you you'll see a lot of guys rush up the arc if you're following my mouse, rush up the arc, flip and change direction right through the quarterback. His hips are still trying to trying to go up the arc while his upper body's trying to go um, into the quarterback. So he, he's not generating a lot, a lot of power right here, and he's able he gets locked up. Say so he gets completely locked up. Quarterback has plenty of time. Now there's some some pretty obvious holding, um, but still he needs to change up that rep. Play 16 of uh, 24. Stunt. All right. Again, the stunts like he, he just he's athletic, so he's a good looper. So he's gonna press up uh, press up the arc. You have a three man stunt. These two guys inside are going to crash through the A and B, pick through the A and B, and he's going to press up the arc and then loop inside through the backside A. So they're going to carry the, the center, the guard, and the tackle. And he gets the sack. And this is just athleticism. 
his 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 ability to turn corners quickly to react again to the quarterback who does a good job trying to avoid that. But he's 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 really athletic, so it's gonna be hard to get away from him in the open field like that. Seventeen needs to defeat hands. All right, he's the the right edge right here, I believe. Looks like him. Okay, yeah, again. So needs to do more right here. Rush it up the arc. He doesn't really threaten. He tries to he tries to give him a little stab inside, but it's not really a true stab inside. Like he's not he's not flipping his hips or anything. Um and then he just tries and he just tries to lean past and bend the the corner. He needs to defeat the hand and he maybe he tries to right here, but he throws his hand too early and it doesn't it doesn't connect. The guy's able to just lean on him. And he's gonna is he gonna fall to the ground? Yeah, he falls to the ground. So you you can see the you can see the power in the bend right here that he is not falling down so easily so easily. But if you're gonna try to do this, you'll see you'll see guys like Khalil Mack who will rush up the arc right here. They're really gonna change their force. So they're gonna they're gonna take the step up field and kind of like he did before, where he's gonna drive off of that step inside. It's gonna freeze the again. It's gonna freeze the the hips of the um, tackle, get him to flip inside, and then he's gonna his body's gonna be you know, uh, in line with the line of scrimmage, and he's going to try to reach outside for you. you. You defeat those arms, and it's going to be really hard for him to recover from that. But he doesn't really do anything inside. Like, nobody thinks at this point you're going inside. Look where his hips are pointed. If a good tackle is not going to fall for that because you're not going to drive inside off of your right foot. That just doesn't happen. So if he was to do that step with his right foot and really try and kind of almost cross him over to the outside, then sure it works, but he then he misses this, the, the the chop. Guy gets on him, and he goes to the ground. So could have set that up better. Obviously, he ends up on the ground. Uh, so 18, burst, bend, rip, bend. <laughs> I don't know why I put bend in there again. I just watch these quickly and, and label these things. So really good burst. I'll just play that again. Good snap timing. His snap timing is inconsistent, but when he does time it up well, it, it's going to be hard for guys to stop him. Rushes up the arc. Hesitation. Tackle shoots his outside hand. He chops it down. That makes the guy off balance. He's, he's putting a lot of – he's going heavy hands right here because he starts to get top heavy. When you defeat the, the hands when you're top heavy, they're going to they're gonna start to bend down like that. Defeats that hand. Bends. Obvious hold right here. That does it get called or does it not get called? Looks like the ref is reaching for a flag. Yep. So it is a flag, um, and this is where he he gets hurt in this on this play right here. So again, really good snap timing. The tackle goes to open uh, to shoot his hands. Nice chop. Nice again. That bend is really really nice from him. Now he gets held, and his you can see his knee buckle right there. Watch his watch his his uh, right knee. So he gets hurt right there. Obviously, your leg is not supposed to do that. Uh, I think he's out for the rest of that game, but good bend. Uh, he forces the hold that, that most likely would have been a sack or quarterback hit, but uh, the right tackle held him and got the penalty. Uh, sack, meh. Oh, uh, I think he gets blocked by a tight end right here. And this is – yeah, he's on the bottom. He gets blocked by a tight end. I don't I don't want to see this, to be honest. If you if you can't defeat a, a, a tight end in the – in, uh, at Oklahoma, uh, you're going to be able to defeat a tackle, you know, so he needs to be better here. And he and he does defeat him, so I shouldn't say that. But look how hard it is for him to defeat him. Now, is he now is he a little bit hesitant right here because he's waiting for that jet sweep? Maybe. That's possible from from Lamb. But at this point, when you're when you're seeing the quarter when you're seeing the quarterback bring back that ball, you really need to just even if it's just simple, not even defeating the hands, not even spinning, not even ripping, not even chopping, not even uh, hump move, nothing. Just flip your hips at this point and just work through him. He he has to power through this tight end, and he's he 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 gets his he initiates contact, but again, upper body is going this way, lower body is going this way up the arc. So flip your hips and just drive through this tight end. He's stronger than this tight end, so this is just bad technique. Um, the tight end is able to hold, but listen, the quarterback right here hurts. He ha he has time to to either sprint up here and, and and scramble, hit this uh hit the tight end. He has some options, but he doesn't. You know he he doesn't obviously. He's not the best QB, 
He missed a lot of throws, by the way, when I was watching Lamb. And, and he could be an interesting guy in like the third or fourth round. But um, it takes way too much work right here for Chase on to, de- to defeat that guy. He is able to defeat him. He is able to get the sack. So, sure, mark it as a positive play, but I kind of marked it as a negative. I don't want to see him struggle that much versus tight end, to be completely honest. Speed to power. All right. 20 out of 24. Bomb the screen. Okay, another sack in this game. So, again, rushes up the arc. But again, look at his look at his look at his hips and look where his upper body are. And he's not really generating a lot of force. They're not really under his frame. So again, step off that right, flip your hips now, flip your hips, and drive right through him. I don't I don't want to see hips hips up the arc, upper body inside. You have to have your whole body in in line. You want to be linear. He's not linear right here, and and it takes him a little bit to to get past that guy. Again, he gets past him. It's a sack. Could he clean it up? For sure. So, and sorry for doing the quick rewinds, but at this point, flip your hips as quick as you can. This guy is open. His chest is open. He's his his momentum's taking him up the arc. If you're you're just gonna drive through him, you have you have the you have the momentum, you have his chest. So flip your hips. He doesn't, he leans into him again, the disconnection. He is able to get low, he is able to get his hands underneath, he is able to throw him out of the way and get the sack. Could have been cleaner. So I'm saying he's he's leaning, he's leaning for that contact and his and his body's not really into it. That's not you're not turning a lot of force right here. You see the angles. So Needs to get his hips around. Gets the sack, though. Okay, so four more plays. Effort, speed. Uh, this is when he chases down land in the open field. Oh, I think he might be faster than the open field or overall faster. Um, he drops into like a short hook zone. You have a quarterback who's able to hit Lamb on, whether it be a hook or curl, a stop, whatever. I like the effort by Chase on right here. And obviously, he shows he's, – he's fa- I think he's faster than him. So I think if you had him on a 40, he legitimately might run uh, a high 4-4. Like, he has that much speed in the open field. So drops into that zone, which, again, he could play – he's shown ability to play man coverage on tight ends and running backs. He can drop into intermediate zones. Um, because he has athleticism, he has – he takes good eggs at angles, I think. Um, and he has the mobility to, to do it. So good chase down. He goes to club that ball. It almost comes out, um, I think. Again, he doesn't see he doesn't see anybody coming right there, right here. And instead of just tackling him, he goes to and again, you better make sure you tackle. If you're gonna do that, if you don't make the tackle, that's a huge red mark. But if you make the tackle, okay, fine. I would like again, you probably like to see left hand on first and then that club come down because if you miss the club, um, you better watch out. But he's able to to leap and grab the jersey, et cetera. And the ball most likely almost comes out right here. Cause that's you could see that. Lamb really has to secure that. So good job by Lamb securing it, but um, good effort, good chase down, good speed, um, good club to get that to try to get that ball out. I'm fine with that. Stunt. He is the obviously the top edge. He circled. Again, really athletic. If you're gonna play him on stunts, you you, you better have that guard discipline to not ha- overcommit to the uh, to the pick to the penetrator. A couple hard steps upfield. Bends it inside, accelerates through that A-gap. Um, Hertz is able to step away and, and throw the ball um, to Lamb, who drops it. Um, again, a really hard catch, but you'd like to see him make that catch. It is him in the hands. I don't – I'm not of the belief, okay, if, you ju- if you're jumping up for a ball and it hits you on the fingertips or hits you on the, on the top half of, of the fingers, you have to catch it. But if it does, if it hits you, you know, b- below, you know, your, uh, your, in, in your palm area, you, you should catch it, um, especially with both hands. So I like to see him catch that ball. But again, we're not doing his review. Two plays left. Bend speed. All right, top of the screen, top edge. Sorry. And he's kind of like a who, who was who was like that last year. Uh, I think a lot of the, a lot of the guys last year were like that when they have three four point stances. They were ridiculous in terms of. Uh, I think I forget who it was. I think it was polite who was ridiculous when he had a four point stance. His his burst, 
and his secondary gear when he got into his third and fourth step was crazy. Um, obviously, Polite, Polite had all the tools. He had all the intangibles. If he if he can get a, his head out of his ass, to be honest, he could be a good rusher. But yeah, he, he's obviously he he doesn't have the mental side of it, which is something that. Uh, I think is so underrated in terms of, okay, we can watch these guys films. We, we could look at what the media says in terms of what the schools are saying about them. But that's why the interviews are so important. The tape sessions, all these things, the smarts, the work ethic, all this stuff is important because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not studying the playbook, you're not learning new techniques, how good are you going to be? Um, so that's what happened with polite rushes up the arc again, really good burst. Doesn't really do much again. would like to see him defeat that outside hand. But he uses the the running back um, as almost like a, as a, a push off point. Again, bending super super low, he gets pushed in the back, but he's super low, maintains his balance, and is able to uh, hit the quarterback. Thankfully, above the knees, but he, that's that's the, that's a bad tackle for the in terms of like the quarterback. Like that's not something you want to do. His his knees are hurting after that. Look how hard his his uh, left knee slams into the ground right here. And he's not trying to be dirty. He's just falling down. You don't want to get tackled like that. That's that's for sure. So uh, good job getting a sack. 24. The last play of the last prospect review until I have to do eight more. <clears throat> or hopefully seven more. I'm really hoping that whoever the Jets draft in the first round is one of the guys I did. That will suck if it's not. But um, it is what it is. I, I think I think it will end up being – if I had to put all my chips down, I'd probably say Thomas. Not because that's who they like the best, but because that's I think will be there. And Thomas, again, is he the best fit for the zone? Maybe not. But Becton, you look at it, again, there's concerns about how big he is, to be honest, that I've, that I've, I've thought about. Guys who are that big tend to have joint issues, tend to have knee problems, tend to have ankle issues. So I'm, I'm concerned just about his body and his weight. Your joints and stuff are not meant to carry that much weight. Um, so that's honestly a slight concern for me that's creeped in a little bit. He is, he's my OT4. He's been my OT4, but that's something that I think in terms of him versus Thomas at, at, at 11, I might, I might want, uh, Thomas because even if, even if Beckham's great, I, I don't know how much his body's going to hold up. I, I, I don't, that's, that's a lot of, that's, that's why like just in general, your body, like guys who are bigger, uh, die sooner, you know, because of, and it's not just because of your joints, but you see them, you see them break down earlier. You see them get more injuries. Um, just in terms of your actual body mechanics, your heart has to work harder to pump the blood through your body. Like your whole body has to work harder to, to support that height, to support that weight. So I, I, I don't know. That's, that's a concern for me. Um, so they run, they're running a, a speed option right here. It looks like a, it's a fake, uh, which they probably could have sold this better. He's looking right to the ground. Like what is he reading right here? So um, speed option, chase on pressures, to, uh, presses towards the mesh point. Shuffles to say lateral, lateral, and he sees the quarter uh, quarterback turn up field. He goes to he goes to like jump throw, which Chase on doesn't know if he's jumping. He, he doesn't know if there's a guy over his head right now. He has no idea, so he goes to deflect that, but he still is able to to catch the uh, the quarterback and and drive him right into the ground. So uh, that's it. Um, appreciate you guys sticking around for what eight prospect reviews. Again, we're probably gonna have another seven more, so like a total of fifteen. Then we have the Seer, then we have Fant, then we have Peanut, then we have whoever the Jets sign. So. Um, I appreciate everybody sticking around again, Monday at eight o'clock jets, 24, seven. If you want to jump on the, the live stream on YouTube, ask some questions, just watch it guys. You should be quarantined and, and bored. So if you want to, um, go on, there's a lot of, I've seen his channel. It's, it's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of opinions there. I want to contest a little bit. Let's just, let's just say that in terms of like players and things like that. Um, but it's, it should be fun. I'm not, I'm not going on there to be a, a, a prick and contest all of his views. He's a, he's a good dude. Uh, like I said, I believe his name is Ryan. So I'll be on there. And then Monday uh, as well, we have the mailbag show with myself and Kyle Smith off season recap mailbag draft thoughts type deal. Um, so I appreciate everybody. Sticking-